So in the earlier videos in this series, we've talked actually quite a bit about dynamic thickness, and that's essentially if you go in here, you know, turn use the comma key to turn your light box off, go into this tool palette here and go into a plain 3D, drag it on your canvas, go into edit mode, make it a poly mesh 3D. Uh, you can turn on polyframe if you'd like, and I'm going to go over here and turn on sketch shader 2 so you can see this. And as we go in here to geometry dynamic, uh, this is older functionality. Uh, this was introduced earlier in earlier versions of ZBrush. We can turn dynamic on, you can do smooth subdivision previews and Q grid and all that stuff. If you want to know more information on that, of course, go to either my YouTube page and then Intro to ZBrush for ideation. There's 60, about 60 videos in there, but 57-ish videos. You can go through there and you can check these out. That'll get you caught up on all these, these types of basics here. But the cool thing they added to this was this uh, thickness over here. So we can turn this thickness up. Actually, they added thickness and micropoly, but thickness is what we're going to talk about now. So what this allows us to do is uh, allows us to generate a preview of what it would look like if we extruded this mesh out. Now we also have smooth subdivision. So with smooth subdivision set to zero, uh, we're just getting this thickness here. Now this, if you've watched in the previous demos, this thickness isn't real geometry. It's just a preview. So we can turn it on and off as needed. You can see it disappears here. And because it's just a preview, this allows us, if we go into the ZModeler brush BZM, we can go in here with our new extrude edge functionality, and you can actually extrude these edges, uh, and it looks like it has thickness, but in reality, uh, it's just again, it's just a preview. You're really just extruding these edges. Uh, of course, there's that new snap functionality we've already talked about. But if it's easier for you to see, you can turn on extrude, as well as stuff we talked about when we were doing the cloth demo, you have this offset now. So if I do offset at negative 100, our original mesh is right here, right at the top. So you can see as I hover over this edge, that's the actual edge I'm extruding. And then the rest of it's just dynamically generated. If I do 100, now my original faces are down here at the bottom and everything else that it's generating is above. So if I turn dynamic off, you're going to see it just dynamically extrudes upwards. And of course, if I'm at offset of zero, now it's going to be right down the middle that you're pulling out from. So when you're doing cloth and it's sticking to the body, you know you can always do an offset of negative 100, so you know that the faces that you're working on are on top of the body, but then it's going into the body, depending on how much I guess I can pull up an example here. Go ahead and hit the comma key. Let's go into our projects. Let's grab that demo anime head. If you wanted to make a mask for him, we could duplicate this off. Let's turn off perspective in the floor. Let's hold down control shift. I'm going to do a slice curve. And let's just slice uh, right across this top of this head here. I'm going to hold down control shift and isolate by tapping, control shift tapping this top part here. Geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. And then I have X symmetry turned on, so if I go in here to zero measure and turn adapt size down to zero, turn on half, and then just hit zero mesh. And I'm just going to keep hitting zero mesh until this gets fairly low. There we go. So now this is going to be our cloth, and our head's going to be our collision volume. So again, with our dynamics menu opened up over here, just open the dynamics menu, grab that white dot, and drag it over here. Double click on this docking station arrows if you don't already have this open. And we can go in here and say collision volume. Let's crank that all the way up to 3200. And we're going to turn that inflate down to zero. So to get these faces to kind of start sticking to that collision volume, let's go over here to contract and the X and Z, just turn off Y just by tapping it, and then run the simulation here. And then I'll go ahead and stick those points to that collision surface. So go ahead and turn contract off. So now that we have cloth on this guy's head, we can go down here to dynamic again, turn on dynamic, and the first default is just for it to smooth. It's basically a smooth subdivision preview. We're going to turn that down to zero, and we're going to play around with that thickness. So as I add thickness, again, if I go back into my ZModeler brush, BZM, and I start extruding these edges, hover over an edge, hold down spacebar, extrude, we can start pulling these edges down, and we can in fact say, snap to surface. So now, as we pull these edges down, it'll snap to the underlying surface. But this extrusion is happening, the real geometry is in the middle, and that dynamics happening gets going inwards and outwards. So just to kind of demonstrate 100, here it is, the real geometry is at the face, and the rest of it's out. And at negative 100, the real geometry is at the face, and the rest of it's just going in. So generally for cloth, probably what I'll do is do an offset of 100. We'll drag that thickness in just a bit. 
And for these last, I'm going to hold down Alt and paint on that face. And then we're going to say, hold it, hover over the face, Q mesh, a single poly. Just pull these backwards. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, they look so realistic. These are just, if I Q mesh these, they're just going to Q mesh inwards. They're not going to delete. So what we need to do is hover over a face and say, delete a single poly. And that'll get rid of both of those that we painted. So now that we have dynamic turned on. Uh, again, let's turn off gravity here. And let's go to B, C, K for that cloth hook brush. And what we can do is we can start moving this cloth around on this head. Now you're going to see as I'm moving it, um, that's not a whole lot of geometry resolution. You can get a preview of it if you go over here to smooth and you turn it up to 1. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe here. Or even up to 2. So this is giving you a preview of what this would look like if you were to go through and move this geometry and then subdivide it twice. And it's also giving you a preview of what it would look like if you actually gave this thing some dynamic thickness. Now where this comes in handy is, you can see what those wrinkles are going to end up doing before committing to an actual subdivision. However, if you want smaller wrinkles and you need more geometry to get smaller wrinkles, what you'll need to do is go in here and put an actual subdivision. So we're going to hit divide once. Uh, so we turn smooth subdiv down to zero, we hit divide once, now when we turn on polyframe you see we got a lot more geometry to work with. In fact if we hit divide again, that's even more geometry. So now I can go through here and as I'm moving this cloth I'm getting a much, uh, much more smaller wrinkles happening. And even on top of this, this is sub-D level 3, I can still add a preview subdivision or one or two of them onto here. So I can go through here, I can smooth this out, I can go through and kind of pull this geometry around on the head and I can have a smooth preview of it all happening. Of course, if I want, I can always drop down to subdivision level 2 or subdivision level 1, and I still have my smooth subdiv on, so now when I move this around, I'm going to get those much bigger wrinkles, a little bit smaller wrinkles, and then subdivision level 3, I'm working with you know 10,000 polygons now, um, even smaller wrinkles here. So using subdivision history and smooth subdivisions to get that, and also that dynamic thickness. So let's go back up here and out of our palette here, let's go ahead and choose a Sphere 3D. Let's go in here to Make Poly Mesh 3D. I'm going to turn on our polyframe here. I'm going to turn X to go into, which basically toggles on this Activate Symmetry in the X direction. I'm going to hold down Shift, Control Shift, grab Select Rectangle. I'm just going to grab this top little bit right here. We're going to say again, Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. If you don't like digging through these menus, I, I usually set up my own custom menu up here and then assign a hotkey to it. Uh, again, if you want to know more about that, ZBrush Radiation, it'll walk you through all the basics of getting started and on my YouTube channel as well. You can check that out. So now what I'm going to do is go to Zero Mesher, Half, depth to size down to zero to get nice even quads, and we just keep hitting Half. So we're going to model like some sort of a knee pad or something like that. I'm going to switch over here to a sketch shade of 2 so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to go in here to my, to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. I'm going to hover over an edge. We're going to switch to extrude. And instead of snap to surface, we'll just do free move. So I'm just going to extrude these edges out here. And you're going to see these are going to go ahead and snap together for me. And if I want, I can tap Alt once and that'll pull out another uh, complete edge ring or edge row. I can always switch this over here to like parallel sides if I want to pull this sh straight out. I can also go up here and tap Alt and hold down Alt and I can pull entire edge rings out. And as I'm doing that I can also tap Shift to switch to planar angle, perpendicular angle if I want to pull these down, or free angle if I want to have uh, full control. So we'll go ahead and say planar angle will pull these out. And uh, let's say we want to add some dynamic thickness to this because we don't want to commit yet. Uh, so we're going to go over here and we're going to turn on dynamic. Uh, we'll turn smooth off for now and I'm just going to turn up this thickness. So what you can see is, again, we're splitting the difference. Offset is at zero. So that real edge is right down there in the middle and we're getting a thickness on the inside that gives me my interior polys. And then this is my uh, exterior polys and the differences are real geometries right here in the middle. So if I want to, I can go in here and hold down Alt and I can paint these. In another new Z modeler edition, I can also hold down Alt and unpaint these or hold down Alt and double tap to unpaint out all the painted ones. But we'll go through here and we'll just add this. Just paint through here, hover over face, switch to extrude a single poly or poly group all. Then let's go ahead and extrude this out. Now when we do that, and we go to the underside here, you can see that the interior is also, because we're giving it thickness, it's just following 
our lead here. So if we go through here and we hold down shift and we kind of smooth this out, we go in here, it also just, it's, it's just basically just extruding a thickness down and giving it, it's not the exact same polygroup, but it's like a parallel polygroup. You know, this has a ring polygroup of purple, this one has green, this one's yellow, this one's light purple. So where you can kind of get into a little bit of trouble here is these can sometimes start to be coplanar through here. So another thing we can do is we can hover over this face here. We can do transpose polygroup all. So we can just tap here. I'm going to go to unmesh mesh center. I'm going to pull in here and kind of pull in here a little bit. And I can go over here and I can choose the smoothness and that'll actually back off uh, some of that geometry a little bit so it's not exactly perfect in there. It'll just kind of back off those edges. So when we were doing that cloth earlier, go back to this head here, you can see that it's getting a little bit crunchy along these edges. If you grab the smoothness and crank it up, that'll help kind of alleviate some of the inconsistencies along that edge there and make uh, our extruded dynamic thickness just work a little bit more, uh, a little bit friendlier. So same thing in here, you can use this smoothness slider to just kind of back those edges off just a little bit. Now, once you're happy with this, if you do want to actually use that geometry, you can click apply and now you'll have real geometry on the inside and real geometry on the outside. So if you wanted to like, you know, go through here and just alt paint these and say Q mesh polygroup all and just punch these through, you can certainly do that. And of course you can hit D for dynamic again. Instead of it's gonna add more thickness. Probably you don't want to do that now that you have real extruded geometry. So turn that thickness down to zero. And now you can use this as like a smooth subdiv preview. Let's turn that up to two. And you can go through here and you do like a under the crease menu, crease PG. And you can also go in here like say crease level of say two, smooth subdiv of three, and then I'll kind of back off those edges a little bit and give you a nice sub D preview. And again, you can just do uh, turning dynamic off is shift D and then D is turning it on. So you can just use hotkeys for that as well.